Hey, it's Mike here, and today, are these expensive prebiotic sodas like Olipop, Poppy, and Bloom Pop actually worth the money? Are they actually healthier than other sodas? How do they compare to diet sodas, for example? And I will say, I personally find them to be delicious, but I also personally find them to be like between two and a half and three dollars a can, which is just wildly higher than, say, Coca-Cola, not that I'm drinking that. So we're gonna take a close look at this, compare the nutrition facts and ingredients in these, the claims that the companies are making, the blood glucose response to soda versus Olipop and more. So let's pop off or pop on, depending on whether these are actually worth it or not. Let's go. <laughs> I should stop. So we have this healthy soda market. All these people are addicted to soda. They're trying to drink something else and in comes these prebiotic sodas. Prebiotic is of course something that can feed your gut bacteria, your beneficial gut bacteria, hopefully. And the main difference here is that we have minimal sugar added. They're also relying on these healthier artificial sweeteners as well as the fiber content that's actually in there. And this is where I will say I was impressed because Olipop at the highest amount of fiber has nine grams of fiber per can. And we're seeing that the average American is only eating 15 grams of fiber a day. So this is nearly two thirds the daily intake of fiber for your standard American person, which right there, I'm like, this is gonna be healthy for that type of person. <laughs> yes, that is absurd and matches right up with how this paper mentions 97% of people are really fiber deficient in the US. And <laughs> we can see a lot of studies associating fiber intake with mortality. We're gonna talk about some more direct studies and ask whether or not that's just antioxidant association, etc. But this is where we need to get to that sugar comparison. Depending on the brand, we're generally seeing between two and five grams of added refined sugars in the form of fruit juice in these. Some of them are a little bit higher, some of them are lower, depending on even the flavor within the brand. They then bolster that sweetness with stevia in the case of Olipop. And we can talk about stevia and other artificial sweeteners when we compare diet sodas later on. But it's pretty obvious comparing even five grams of refined added sugar to the 39 that is in your standard can of Coke, which is the same size. Yeah, we're talking about nearly eight times as much refined sugar in standard soda. And I found that Olipop actually published published a preprint, a randomized control trial, comparing the blood glucose response of Olipop to classic Coca-Cola, the same amount. And then they also saw what it would do when people were eating meals. But we can look to that main chart here and just see, bam, a pretty decent spike with that even relatively small can of Coke. I mean, people are hitting big gulps and drinking even like four times as much as that sometimes in a sitting. But then we see really a modest small spike with the Olipop. And that's what you'd expect with two to five grams of refined sugar. And as you can see from this chart with the meals, there's just a bit more of a sharp blood sugar spike with the Coca-Cola than there is with the Olipop. And we also have a TikTok creator who tests his blood sugar with virtually anything that you can think of. And he tried Olipop and he ended up again with a very small spike. All right, it's been just over an hour since I've had the Olipop. Let's have a look at the glucose monitor to see what happened. There is an elevation here. This went up by 15 milligrams. And this is similar to the poppy soda that I had yesterday. There is added sugar in these. This is where I have to say, people becoming too obsessed with blood sugar can also be an issue not to get too much of a tangent, but he even goes as far as to say he's not gonna be drinking it because of that like microscopic amount because he just doesn't wanna have any added sugars. So even though there's some prebiotic fiber in this drink, it's still causing a slight elevation in my blood sugar. And for that reason, I don't like to drink things like this. I just don't wanna add sugar into my diet. I'm trying to reduce that as much as I can. The comment section was a little bit like, just let me have something in this world. <laughs> but he makes a good point that the poppy has apple cider vinegar, which should lower blood sugar spikes, but probably doesn't have enough. I should also add that the two grams of fiber in there is really abysmally low. Also, the two grams of soluble fiber in here may not make much of a difference with regard to my gut health. So for me, I don't think this product is good for my blood sugar. I also don't like the price. This cost me over $3 for one can. And I've also had issues with him historically comparing like bacon and eggs and its blood sugar spike and saying, look how low that is compared to something like a Coke or bread. And it's like, bro, there's other things happening in your bloodstream like fat spikes, 
totally different topic and cholesterol, things like that. But yeah, to summarize, a microscopic rise, and he also saw a tiny rise with the poppy as well. So then we have to ask the question, what is going on with fiber? How are they fitting nine grams of fiber in a can of soda? Well, for Oli Pop, they have a mix called Oli Smart, and they have various fibers depending on whether it is refrigerated or not. Both have cassava root fiber though, and then they have some other botanicals that are not fiber, but you know, they claim would have a benefit. Poppy also uses cassava root fiber. And yes, this is a bona fide, genuine prebiotic fiber. It's going to be helping with your gut. And it's interesting here though, because it is soluble and insoluble fiber. So I have to wonder if they just further refined it to only soluble fiber, because you would be able to see the insoluble fiber. I personally haven't been able to see anything pouring a glass of this stuff. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but that being said, soluble fiber is great. And I do foresee this as being a pretty effective way to increase your fiber consumption for people who have that sensitive gut where they're adding fiber and they get pain, discomfort, bloating. Like this could be a way of doing it, have like half uh, Olipop and see how it goes and then work your way up and then add more food. So knowing that this is essentially a fiber supplement marketed, wrapped up as a soda, we can look to the fiber supplement studies because we already know that the association for mortality in the epidemiology is there, but that's not a randomized trial. That doesn't determine causation. So let's just see what we have. When it comes to soda, people are, again, mainly concerned about blood sugar. Do we see any results there? Well, from this meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials on fiber supplementation, yes, it lowers blood sugar and even body fat as well. And it also lowers LDL or bad cholesterol in a bit of a convoluted way that I've talked about in the past, where we have fiber essentially acting as a sponge for our bile acids, which are chemically, structurally very close to cholesterol. And if we don't have fiber there, our intestines reabsorb it, bring it to our liver and our cholesterol levels can remain higher because of that. But fiber can grab that and it can pull it out of your system. It can also grab toxins and pull it out of your system. This is also how PFAS can be eliminated. So that's really good. I should title this, does Olipop remove PFAS? That might get more clicks. And drugs, bile acid sequestrants that act in the same way tend to lower LDL cholesterol by about 20%, but they have negative side effects. So yeah, we can definitely lower it this way. But it doesn't end there. Could this soluble fiber result in people dying less? Again, we have fiber intake associated with lower mortality, but could it be the antioxidants? Could it be the other phytochemicals? Too bad we don't have a study where we can just randomize people to take these supplements or not and see how much they die. Oh wait, we do have one of those studies. We actually have a wild study that looked at people who were critically ill and then they randomized them to getting fiber supplements or not in their feeding tubes. You thought this was just a fun video about prebiotic soda, nothing depressing. Anyway, we have the results, which were an astounding 34% lower mortality across 12 studies. And this is a meta-analysis. That's insane. Frankly, that should end the carnivore claim that you are better off with zero fiber in its tracks. The only yellow flag in the study is that they are warning about some potential bias in those studies, but overall we're seeing a positive effect there. Now we have to get to cost. Yes, I said that Coca-Cola is cheaper. Obviously it is, and cheapest is not always best. I mean, you could technically just take sparkling water, mix up some table sugar in there and have probably the cheapest soda that you can get. But Olipop is perhaps like the most expensive can of anything I see anywhere. That's non-alcoholic at least. We're talking about even an eight pack being over $2 a can. So. It is it worth that? First, I'll just say, if you're eating a normal amount of plants that I think humans are meant to eat, which would put you at like 35 to 70 plus grams of fiber, this is probably not gonna make that much of a dent in your health profile. But again, if you're on the standard American diet, and you're not gonna be eating vegetables due to some weird stubborn reason or something, whatever you got going on, and you're gonna drink soda, this could be it for you. An Olipop site, which makes me think maybe it's Olipop? I don't care at all. Okay, so I do flop between pronunciation. Olipop, like a lollipop, like I first said it, is correct. I'm not the only one to have this issue though. The problem with these Olipops is that they usually don't taste good. Oh, hold on. <laughs> when you, I haven't been saying it the way that you're saying it. Olipop. I've been saying Olipop. <laughs> you're saying Olipop. Yeah, I was just reading it. <laughs> Their site claims that it's expensive because they have healthier ingredients and all of the other sodas are just high fructose corn syrup, which is super cheap, which yes, obviously it is. Is it really that much more expensive when they're doing these massive batches with these healthier ingredients in there? I guarantee it's more expensive, 
But is there perhaps a healthy marketing tax? We don't know. We don't have their inner books. Coca-Cola, as now the third largest beverage company in the world, has a higher volume of production, which is gonna make it cheaper. Like if they'd started making Olipop, they probably could bring the cost down. And you probably could make your own version of this, get one of those little soda makers and mix up some different flavors and add some little prebiotic fibers in there. And if somebody does that, let me know. That's actually pretty epic. And Coca-Cola itself, other conventional sodas are gonna have a negative health cost down the line. In fact, an NYU study found that for each 12 ounce can of soda, you can tack on a theoretical 10 cents of healthcare costs in the future. All right, so now we gotta get to diet sodas because most people who are gonna be eating these, they're probably choosing them over a diet soda. And so is it worth that extra cost? Well, first I will say diet sodas have zero grams of prebiotic fiber or fiber in general. So you're not getting that main benefit that you get from these sodas. But this brings us to the artificial sweetener conversation because Olipop has stevia. I'm sure that sweetener differs between the brands, but in general, the most consumed artificial sweetener for these diet sodas would be aspartame which, you know, I think has some negative health effects, but might be a little bit overblown. Yes, it is from the WHO declared as a lower level class 2B carcinogen. Aloe vera is also on that list. Aspartame is the most widely consumed artificial sweetener. And we do have a study on general artificial sweetener consumption versus sugar sweetened beverages on various types of mortality. And well, we see a pretty clear trend for the sugar sweetened ones. Unless you're drinking two or more of these artificially sweetened sodas, you're not gonna be seeing an increased risk of mortality. Mortality. But that brings us to stevia, which we're seeing more and more positive results from the health research, even surprisingly so. From this meta-analysis, eating stevia for one to four months showed a lowering in blood sugar, so that is great. And then we are also seeing some overall positive microbiome effects. It lowers the population of more pathogens than good bacteria and increases a bunch of good bacteria. And steviocide, which no is not killing your friend Stevie, it's an active ingredient in stevia, appears to be anti-inflammatory. And there are a bunch of other positive effects for stevia that are Claimed. But I will say we have concern for some other artificial sweeteners as well, like erythritol potentially increasing stroke risk, some arguments for and against that. And then we also have sucralose from a very recent study increasing appetite in people. So concerned there. But those are again, data points that are pointing to these prebiotic sodas being better for you than diet soda. And then obviously better for you than those sugar sweetened beverages, conventional soda. So in the end, yeah, they figured out a way to make people take a fiber supplement. Like if you've had that root beer or that cream soda, you know, those are delicious. I even made a root beer float out of that once and it was amazing. But of course it comes with an extra cost and that's a cost that you really don't need to pay to get these same benefits. You could be eating a variety of fruits and vegetables and slamming by that amount of prebiotic fiber and overall fiber and still eating even less refined sugar, even though it's really a dismal amount of refined sugar. So personally, I would like to see the cost of these come down. I'm starting to see them everywhere, so maybe we will, but my guess is that they're going, we're a healthy product, we're gonna keep our price high. We're just gonna gouge people for trying to be healthy. We can call this healthflation or whatever, I don't know. But again, if somebody's making some of this stuff or some variation of this, I would love to hear about it. I'd love to taste it. So yeah, in the end, we've got a good amount of fiber, we've got a low amount of sugar relatively, and we've got a sweetener that does doesn't appear to have the harmful effects of other artificial sweeteners in these generally, and if anything has positive effects. So yeah, let me know down below. Do you like this stuff? Do you think it's a total ripoff? Or do you have any other insights or concerns? And of course, feel free to like, subscribe and all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.